Welcome to the show, guys. Uh, glad to have you all. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me today. Well, thanks so much for having us. Uh, it's it's an honor. We're really happy to be here. I, in hiding in my home, I played Hollis, Hollis Coogan. Uh, my real name is Christian Parker. Really cool to be here. Uh, really looking forward to this. Uh, I'm Max Toscano. Uh, that's my real name. I played uh, Anthony. It's great to have you both here today. The honor's mine. I have been watching since the beginning, and honestly, even no matter how many times I do an interview, it's always surreal to actually get to talk to the characters behind the scenes and the actual people. So it's I'm just as much an honor for me as it is for you all. <laughs> all right, well, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and begin off with the questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, and this is the big one, how does it feel to be finished with hiding in my home? Do you miss it at all? That, that is big. You know, it's been going on now a lot longer than we originally thought it would. Um, like Max, do you remember like back toward the beginning that we were like, oh, this thing's going to be done by like February or March of last of 2021. Yeah. We were talking about it like, oh, you know, like, you know, before I think of something else, like we'll do a quick project just to keep ourselves <laughs> yeah. kind of occupied. Uh, and then, you know, like, like a year and a half or so later, uh, you know, we finally just get done with it like last week. And this ended up being essentially like the longer term project. It's oops, you know, we messed up there, kind of. Um, so I've had mixed emo, not mixed, like I've had a, a wide array of different emotions about the prospect of this being done. And now that it is, um, you know, there have been times when like this is, I mean, just making some kind of creative project that like a small but dedicated group of people are watching. Um, like that's been something like I've, one of the longest running like ambitions in my whole life and kind of, it, it happened and there have been times when i've i've thought to myself i don't want it to be done at all uh and then there have been times when the work is you know just like we've been doing it for a long time and it's like well this is boy this is getting tiring and it's it'll be a relief to have it be done at this point and i know it's a cliched answer but at this point i haven't really processed the fact that it is over i think the longer something goes the harder it is to actually feel like it's over when it is yeah you know i'm not gonna lie like i'm i'm honestly really gonna really gonna miss it like it was it was fun you know driving up to christian's house which is kind of you know where we based our operations a thousand uh, you know, times right like making that drive uh, and it got to a point where I didn't even need the GPS anymore, and I need the GPS because <laughs> um, I'm I'm terrible at directions. Uh, but like, you know, going up there, kind of getting into that mindset, really diving into the the universe again um, on site, and then just you know getting to work for like the you know eight to ten hour shoot days we had, uh, and then just you know decompressing and going out to the diner after. Like that was yep. that was really I thought like you know, cathartic where we could kind of discuss like the work, we could discuss where we're going next, what we did, how like uh, our, you know, our our ideas kind of manifested on set, um, which was a really cool experience. Uh, but like, I honestly it really became like, you know, it became these events, it became like a big, like a big part of my life. And it was like, I, I really enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed the process and it's gonna be weird, uh, you know, having that be over. Uh, I'm sure, you know, whenever we do something again, it's going to follow a similar format in terms of the process. So I guess I'm not totally done with it, but like, um, yeah, like just within this universe, getting into that routine, it's just become such a, a staple of my life the past 18 months. It's weird to, uh, it's weird to not have that right now. I'm really glad that it ended up being a long form project. So this was, this was honestly your little COVID project. You're kind of your bubble. Sort it of. did like end it, up being that, yeah. yeah. It, it sort of ended up being like that, uh, like Christian just said, but like, I feel like we were going to do this anyway, at some point, um, mm -hmm. COVID or not, uh, we both would have had that time of year, a decent amount of free time. Cause I was on summer break from school, uh, cause I'm still in college. So, um, like we, I think we would have been able, I think we would have done it anyway, but like COVID kind of just made it a little bit easier to clear out the time and not have to compete with anything else while we got this project off the runway um mm -hmm. which is kind of the the time i think we need to spend the most time really on it and, and and that that kind of allowed us the freedom to do that without really thinking about anything else yeah it was it was it came around um 
it's exactly right. Like this would have happened inevitably or some series, some unfiction project would have happened inevitably uh, between the two of us. Um, Cause we were talking about like in the months building up to it, like almost a year uh, beforehand, we were talking about ideas. We were like, we were showing each other stuff. You know, I remember showing Max Marble Hornets for the first time. And it was like, you know, the, it's like, we just, we both loved that format and that tone um, or mood, I should say. And like, we just really wanted to make something like that. I had wanted to for like a decade and Max immediately latched onto it as well. And it's just like, it was inevitable that we would try something like this. Um, and then just kind of being at home much of the time in those early days, that just exacerbated the need to do something for me, at least like I was doing nothing. I was, I had just graduated from college myself that, that spring and I was looking for work and like, I had nothing going on. And so it was like, I need to at least release like creative impulses. And so it was like, well, we got to start something. And in the beginning, hiding in my home was just going to be extremely short term. It was going to be like, it was actually going to end with the video where Max is, where Anthony is introduced which would have been a terrible mistake in the end, because that's, in our opinion, when it like actually gets worthwhile, gets decent. Um, without that, like the original videos don't really mean much, but that, you know, it was gonna be something short term. And then with the extra time we had and we kept discussing it, it became just this long-term flourishing project. Yeah, Christian sort of approached me with that, like when it was becoming time to film that video. And then like immediately, you know, once I sort of, got involved and he sort of started filling me in on what the uh on what the you know the the video series is about what's going on um you know the roadmap of what he was you know creating at the time because he was on video like 10 or 11 when he like really reached out uh, he's like oh i've been producing this series of videos uh and i was like okay but like and once we started talking about it we realized there was way more to tap into uh like i think mutually that just kind of synthesized between us that like, okay, um, we can kind of sequence this with some other abstract ideas that we'd already come up with and, you know, kind of create this storyline around this character that goes further than the, you know, tentatively planned original ending. So like all the other stuff that like, kind of snowballed from there very, very quickly creatively. Uh, what was the most difficult part of the series? Uh, do you think that it was the filming process, the writing, maybe uh, trying to sync your schedules together to be able to uh, produce? I'll tell you one thing. S scheduling and syncing up our schedules was maybe one thing that was way easier the whole time yeah. than it could have been. Uh, mostly because, well, I mean, I, I work from home now that I do work and it's like, the, I, I can do whatever. I can make my own hours, it's fine. You know, Max being at school, uh, I was like, I was worried. And and our friend, uh, Elijah, who played Dr. Tanner, um, like I was worried that we would not be able to schedule things very easily, but in the end we could. Everyone made a lot of sacrifices and a lot of long drives. And it was, that all worked out quite well. Um, otherwise, I could honestly give certain answers as to like what's the most difficult part of, or difficult aspect of each different part of the entire process that, you know, writing, shooting, editing. Um, honestly, I think ultimately, if, if I had to choose one that was most difficult, it would be, I mean, they all have their different positives and negatives, but I would say that shooting was the most difficult. I'm not a great director, <laughs> like evoking emotions out of the actors, that's hard. <laughs> And I, that was, you know, plus just keeping things running smoothly on a shoot day. If we have a bunch of stuff packed in, that was always very difficult. Yeah. For me, it was always like that point in the shoot day, about like two thirds of the way through when we still have like a substantial amount of, uh, of, you know, time left to work. And like, at that point, like I am, I'm mentally at the diner. Uh, and like, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to decompress. It's always and talk about, at the diner. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and talk about like you know, oh, what comes next in the series, you know, uh, how we think that's gonna play, all this stuff, like kind of do a little bit of a retrospective on the day and it's very cathartic and relaxing. And like, these days are exhausting, especially since I don't sleep in, you know, the way I should, uh, cause I'm a college student. But like, um, at, at it's that point, like two thirds of the way through the shoot when you still have like three hours left. That's something kind of different from most of the creators I've interviewed. Most of them don't, I mean, I understand why it's because you had to get different people together 
to be able to do the things. And most people don't do it all in one burst like that, in 10 hour bursts. Usually it's like a couple hours here, a couple hours there. But like I said, definitely understandable with uh, you all having to commute to each other and everything. Christian would always give us these estimates. Like I would always be like, oh, how long do you think the shooting days can take? He was like, X amount of hours. I'm like, no way. <laughs> And then it ended up taking exactly as long as they thought it was going to pretty much every single time without fail. Uh, so, you know, whoops, uh, maybe I shouldn't have doubted him, but like, That's a skill. <laughs> yeah, we had to, we kind of had to do that because like, we kind of had to block out these days because that, that's what honestly, I think made it easy to sequence our schedules. Uh, uh, if we had done, you know, shorter bursts, it would have been a lot harder because we would have had a lot more, you know, dates to pin down, but like, I think uh, our kind of willingness to do that was what made it so easy. And it's all, it's tempting to do it in shorter bursts. Like it really is at times. Um, but in the end, I do think that maybe that would have made it more difficult. I mean, it certainly would have made it more difficult to like get everything done, having to make more journeys and get together more often. But um, in addition to that, just it would have maybe felt like we were getting less done at once and that would have been less motivating or less uh we would have had less motivation to continue then i think in the end i think that the long shoot days were necessary um and helpful though they were difficult max i'm curious if like i want to know what your most difficult shoot day was for me it was the one number 46 the one at the park over this past summer uh that one like everything about that one was hard um because there needed to be no people around and there were people around so we needed to like work around that yeah. um filming the little sequence of anthony which i was holding the camera at, for anthony right at that moment uh, where he handcuffs dr tanner to the to the railing and just making that happen that's like the one time that i like got angry because <laughs> then i i know you remember that that's like the one time that i like oh my god this is this is never gonna happen this is never gonna work um and i guess it did in the end it looked it, it were it looked passable in the end i think um that was the most difficult of all the shoots that was probably the most strenuous any part of the shooting process ever was i didn't have to do that much that day so i like besides like the getaway scene uh, which yeah. I injured my shoulder on because I jumped into the car. <laughs> I, oh, cause, okay, so what happened was I was like, no, Christian, I could totally do this. I could totally jump through the passenger side into the front seat, like, uh, you know, some character in an action movie. Right. Uh, I couldn't do that. Well, well, actually, that's sort of not true. I did get into the front seat, but I ended up like wedged in a way that like pinched my shoulders and like it's still kind of sore right now. Um, I. <laughs> I was so, like, so I wanted to use that so bad yeah, and I, know, I couldn't that. because then it was it took too long for you to like reorient yourself so you could actually drive away I know I but was I stuck, still I was, have I the like, clip of you doing it though I know you got to put that in the bloopers but like I know I was oh, yeah. I was basically like a turtle like a box turtle on his back for about like 10 seconds and we're like all right we can't use this <laughs> That's amazing. but the hardest shooting day for me I mean like all the times we were in the storage unit, I think the one when we were when we were in the storage unit and I had to lay down, like, yeah. and like, I then I, like I had to lay down. I had to put all my like my phone and my keys and my wallet and stuff like to the, under the pillow. So I had like this, so we couldn't see it. So I had like this protrusion under my head, which hurt. Um, and I was just lying on this dirty storage unit floor for about like two hours, uh, and then like. <laughs> And then later I was handcuffed for another two hours and my hands were all sweaty and we broke the handcuffs. So I had to hold them together. And like, that was, and, and all the while it was like 98 degrees in the storage unit. Oh, they are gosh. not air conditioned, yeah. uh, which, you know, because you're not putting people in there normally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like, yeah, that was, that, was, willing, that was the hardest one for me. That sounds we were rough. not willing to splurge on a, on an air conditioned storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that, Max. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, we, the things we do for art. So uh, do either of you have a favorite episode? And maybe it's recency bias. I honestly really like the last one. Um, it just, it ha I, I like the, I like the quiet or lack of talking for the last like 70% of that video. And I think that tonally like i i'm i'm big on tone or mood like if you can 
create a good one um, or an effective one for the given moment, then I think that that's like that does a majority of the the heavy lifting you need. And I think that worked quite well. And that's largely thanks to Max that we kind of ended up doing it that way. Um, otherwise, a couple of maybe runners up or just can be dark horse contenders for my favorite. Um, I'm, I'm, I know how much work went into it on my end. Uh, 35, which is the one where Anthony first goes into the storage unit. That's the longest video in the series. And it took a lot of that. That was probably the most broken up that a single video ever was in terms of the production, um, spanning the most different days and different shoots. Um, and there were some artistic flourishes in that one that I kind of liked like anthony closing the garage door outside his house as if to close the door on that on the whole story because he was taking a step away and then by the end of that video dr tanner is closing the storage unit door in the same way on him from the other side and i was like oh you know that's gonna be great uh and it was so subtle that like i don't know if that anyone noticed that but i i thought that one was a you know poetic one in the end so i think those are my two favorites I think you're definitely onto something with um, with that last one. I think it was easily undisputed top five in the whole series. I love the one where we were first at the park uh, in the dark because when yeah. we were first planning out like the rest of the series after the Anthony introduction, like that was when we talked about that video and I looked up the park and I was I, I got so excited for the shoot and like I, I I love the like I'm a big believer in terms of um, fiction, that ambiance, vibe, and sort of general, general, you know, ethereal aura of the story carries a lot of water. It carries a ton of water. It's I've seen it make bad stories entertaining, um, mm -hmm. like particularly in like the creepy pasta medium. Like I, like I, Christian, and I have talked about this at length. I can rattle off like ten stories that suck that I enjoyed because of that because they set the mood well. Um, yeah. So like, I think the the creepy nature of that, you know, the bridge and the the, tra uh, the train tunnel and all that stuff, like, I think it, I think it raised the stakes on the series a little bit, granting the viewer a sense that, you know, we're gonna be headed into dark territory, that things are certainly not gonna be easy for these people. And that um, like, like I, I like I, in hindsight, I love the tunnel, like walking into the tunnel as this sense of like, you know, they're embarking on this, they're embarking on something, you know, unknown, dark, and a little in over their heads. So that was one of my favorite videos. As for like another one, um, the the second to last one, 47, where, you know, Hollis and I finally come together and have that conversation. As an actor, I really enjoyed that I got to like really go for it in that one, because like in all the previous videos, I've been trying to, I've been trying to convey this tone of artifice and roboticism that kind of makes Anthony look like this, you know, very somewhat disjointed, disingenuous, little bit dishonest actor where he's like, a actor as in like, you know, the general term, not like actually like performer, but like, I, I, I kind of wanted, I kind of wanted there to be something off and fake about him the entire time. And then in that last video, I got to actually cut loose and be the character for real, for real. And like in all of his intentions and his neuroticisms and his angers and his, you know, erratic nature. Uh, so I got to cut loose in that one. Um, plus it was, you know, the reveal that Anthony and Hollis, were, you know, like there's, there's a collaboration there. But I do have a question kind of um, leaning off of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you kind of brought it up a little bit, but you didn't go into too much detail. When you were making the series, um, did you have like an idea in mind for how you wanted it to go, how you wanted it to end? Or was it really just this organic being that kind of developed as you went? You know, I, I could take this one because that's the ending Please. is where I got creatively more involved than I was with a lot of the rest of it. Um, like the latter third. Uh, the ending was synthesized very, very, very soon after Christian reached out to me about the series. Uh, and like, I just started thinking about like the potential for where this goes. And like, then we were just bouncing ideas off each other. And by like, I mean, we were on like 
before like video 25, I would say came out, we, we had it almost nailed down. Um, like we had it, we had this, like <laughs> Christian and I were a little bit afraid that people were going to think we retconned it. Um, <laughs> but like, we totally, I wondered like, a little bit. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I, I totally get that. But like, we, yeah. like, uh, like the ending was, was something like I, I, you know, partially thought of, um, and Christian, you know, really kind of helped me flesh that out, you know, in our talks together before, like, I even filmed a video. We had a lot of it. We didn't have the idea to get the uh, liaison and Dr. Tanner involved in that specific capacity until a tiny bit after that. But that was still early on in the series when we decided how that was going to go down. Essentially, we, the way I think of it, we basically came up with like 85% of the series right at the beginning as soon as we decided to expand it beyond just oh this other character anthony is introduced and we find out what hollis was really doing and that was going to be the whole series um when we decided to expand it from there we came up with about like almost the whole thing right away um we had a video by video outline straight through uh video 32 which is where Anthony goes to Dr. Tanner's apartment and they confront each other. You see Dr. Tanner's face for the first time. We had a video by video outline straight through there as early as like August, August of 2020. And we didn't plan anything uh, beyond that video by video. And a lot of elements of that we didn't plan um, right away like that. It was a few months later that we decided upon the or on the storage unit stuff and what Hollis would be doing in those next few videos. Um, but we always did have the ending in mind. We knew what the characters were doing. We knew what, what it was building to in videos 47 and 48. That was concrete pretty much from the beginning. As far as the, you know, dynamic with the liaison of Dr. Tanner, like I always, I always kind of thought of it structured sort of like Jurassic Park. Like originally, you know, <laughs> You kind of get your uh, you kind of get your lead up to the island. You know, you get the music and like they're flying in on the helicopter, uh, and then like they're like, oh, there's this giant dinosaur, and which is sort of like the reveal of Anthony. Um, and then you get the T Rex, the wow. conflict between them and the T Rex, which is like the the you know kind of sort of juxtaposition between Anthony and Hollis and their kind of gamesmanship against each other and then all of a sudden you get the velociraptors and they sort of dominate the latter third of the story as these oh like the stakes have been raised this is way more dangerous and then you know it kind of becomes about the t-rex again at the end unfortunately we couldn't swing the animatronic dinosaurs um <laughs> i it's true I, it's true I, I wanted them i wanted them i wanted them i wanted hollis and anthony <laughs> to be played by animatronic dinosaurs but we couldn't do that is it bad that i've never seen jurassic park there's a little, like, yeah. It's a little. pretty bad. All right, I'll watch it then. You gotta watch Especially it. Especially given that movie. hiding in my home is apparently just like uh, literally a reinterpretation right. of it. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't know until right now. I'm afraid that Spielberg is going to sue us, if we're being totally honest. Oops. No, the way it came yeah. out honestly was perfect. If it didn't come out the way it did, I don't, honestly don't know if it would be in my top five favorite. The fact that it was... It had a trail that you could follow, but it wasn't an easy trail to follow is the reason I liked it so much. Because every episode that came out, I was like, well, now I think this happened. So it really just it kept me coming back, kept me sucked in the whole time. I, I think in the end, I think it, it worked. I, in the end, I think it succeeded. And I'm I'm proud. That's all yeah, we, we needed. We landed the plane and yeah. none of the passengers got harmed. So we're good. All these names, are just I feel like there's a lot of weight to them. I don't know if there actually is, but uh, were there inspirations, like big inspirations behind the names and whose idea? Um, was the names. I came up with all the names. Max never complained. <laughs> I I don't, did we like, I don't think we ever really even talked about the names much. I think I'm, I told you why, how I came up with them, but beyond that, I don't think we like discussed them at length. Yeah, um, like I, I forgot how you came up with Hollis Coogan. Uh, I, 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 feel, I always thought Anthony was kind of appropriate since I'm actually Italian. And I was like, okay, you know, that's pretty believable. That we're, was we're why, yeah, that was why on that one. <laughs> we're not straying too far from the path there. Uh, but like, I forgot how you <laughs> came up with Hollis Coogan. Like, I remember you saying like, oh, it, it's just an slightly off center enough name that like people aren't gonna like go search the uh, missing persons and come up with like 20 <laughs> results and be like, oh my God, is this real? It's real. That was, like, that was partially, that was partially it. Yeah, I wanted, I mean, I, I, I have a thing with like, I, I didn't want them to be named just James, you know, John, nothing wrong with those names. I don't know. I kind of wanted something that would be, I mean, Anthony's pretty common, but I don't know. Hollis just sounded good to me. It was 
from the experimental filmmaker uh, Hollis Frampton. That's um, he, he made a lot of structuralist films, and and um, there's one called Nostalgia that I saw once. This is very like very obscure stuff, um, but I saw that was that kind of experimental movie was uh, an inspiration for the kinds of videos Hollis would make. The the cryptographic or you know just generally um distorted kinds of videos those tropey unfiction series videos um and you know he he's like he expresses hollis expresses the desire to be a filmmaker or an artist and that comes into play in the end of course given that they were trying to make a, a kind of a statement uh with everything they were doing um so that was the inspiration for hollis's name and also just it was a bonus that it was a name that I was relatively uncommon. There is a story behind Dr. Tanner, and I, I would love to know if anyone made this association. I I doubt it. It's pretty obscure. It's it's a name from a creepy pasta that I read like eight not eight or nine. Wait, years wait, ago. which one? The uh, the world's best school psychologist. Oh yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. yeah that yeah. No, no sleep story, I should say. Yeah, the, the school psychologist in that story is named Dr. Tanner. And I just thought that was just a snappy, almost, it had the potential to be a really sinister sounding name. That was that was it. But it is from that originally. Oh, there, there's actually one other story, if I can. Yeah, sure. Um, Dr. Tanner's real first name is Martin. M-R-M-A-R-T-I-N. That, um, that was a mistake, actually. Uh, you, it's, it's there in the whole series, you know, both the videos and the supplementary interactive stuff that you can see on the discord, that name comes up two times only. Um, the first time was a mistake. Um, you hear it in video 47, the liaison from off camera when all of them are together in Anthony's kitchen and they have a gun pointed at Anthony, the liaison says, you know, Martin, we, I think we should listen to what they have to say. Um, because that's like the one time he lets the facade slip. That's Dr. Tanner's first name. Um, it came about due to a mistake in a, a little supplementary interactive part. Back in like December of 2020, right as those characters were being introduced, Dr. Tanner and, and the liaison, um, there was, you know, they their company, their organization is based largely on like getting other people to kind of do... Uh, mediary work between them so that they have they do as little as possible to like communicate and send messages so they that's why they often their payments often uh, involve non-monetary tasks um and as a means of getting the audience complicit in those crimes and the communication the communicative work which is thematically relevant we had the liaison tell people to send anagrams and coded messages over Twitter and just ver and email and various other places. And one of the anagrams was supposed to be a location that another client was supposed to meet the liaison and Dr. Tanner. And it was supposed to be Main Street 245. And I forgot one of the T's in the anagram that's in the word street. I messed up. I forgot the, <laughs> the second T. And so what people thought it was, was C. Martin 245. That was the only other yeah. thing that made sense. And so his name became Martin. <laughs> I've often found that watching like interviews and like sort of, you know, behind the scenes, like retrospectives, is that like so many like little creative intricacies come out of these errors, like all the time in fiction. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, you two definitely sound like you're going to work together again in the future, kind of what you mentioned earlier. And just this, um, this synergy is really solid. So do you think uh, if you do work together again, which I know you will, do you think it would be in the Hiding in My Home uh, universe or would it be kind of its own new series? Where are you thinking about as far as the uh, future goes? The yeah, Hiding I mean, in My Home universe. <laughs> we've, uh, no, we've, we've, yeah. talked, we've talked briefly and sort of preliminarily about, you know, maybe doing that at some point. Like, we're, we're, we're not going to say no, right? Like, we're somewhat mm. open to it. We just have no idea what it would be whatsoever at all right now um and we're definitely i would think are gonna do other things first i've gotten to a point where like i'm i'm like restless and miserable if i'm not thinking or trying to think of some kind of creative concept um i, I was thinking i was trying to think of new stuff last night even <laughs> and 
excuse me, um, we we talked about when we were planning hiding in my home and beforehand, you know, we want to we want to make on fiction series, we want to make we want to write creepy pastas. I find that interesting. I feel like the the ARG on fiction community and the creepy pasta community, they're kind of they're very similar and yet still kind of separate. I'm I'm curious how many people have attempted both. Um I'm sure there are some, but I don't know of any of them. Um, we, we definitely want to try writing some stuff, at least secondarily or at some point. I've tried to write a few things that I'm hopefully going to like. I'm hopefully going to publish somewhere if possible, at least just on no sleep, if nothing else, because um, anyone can do that. And uh, I'll say this, like, you know, this, this felt like it took a long time to finish hiding in my home. I know we both were very tired by the end of it. And, and I was like, you know, I want to try to just write or do something in some other medium first. And then just when we uploaded the last video a few days ago, there were like a lot of, I mean, you know, it's, it's a tight knit, small audience, but the people who watch, it was just, there was an outpouring of just of thankfulness and, and appreciation of the series. And I was just, I was very touched. And I, but after that, I was immediately like, I, I want to make another series or I want to make like a short film or just, I want to keep doing cinematic stuff because of this. Cause you know, people, I, if people actually liked hiding in my home, which is like astound, like, you know, I, I want to keep, I want to give them more, you know, and I just couldn't help but feel that way too. As far as like creepy pastas uh, go, like we talk about them at length and we, yeah. you know, dissect them and talk about strengths and weaknesses and what really works, what doesn't work. Like, you know, almost super analytically. And like, I feel like just, we have so many ideas of what works and doesn't work. I feel like, you know, maybe we should be able to put it together and maybe not. Like I've told Christian this, like there's a, there's a very probably greater than 50% chance. Like, you know, we go for it and one or both of us are just terrible at it and we can't figure it yeah. out. Uh, but we I want, know. you know, we want to know that. Um, yeah. Cause we just have so many ideas that float around our head. You absolutely should continue making things because um, there was definitely a reason you were discovered. It wasn't it wasn't random at all. There was a huge, well, I, w I don't want to say huge, but there was definitely a very dedicated community that got that out to inside of mind, which kind of sparked the initial uh, takeoff. So, mm -hmm. if you keep producing, you keep making things. I don't. I mean, it could be creepy pasta, it could be videos. If you keep producing, I guarantee that's not going to be a small audience for too terribly long. <laughs> you have no idea the power behind your creativity. And I see it. Uh, well, that's, you know, that's, it. that's unbelievably, you know, humbling to hear. Yeah. Like, it's like, you, we're, we're just, un, we're undyingly grateful to all the people that like, you know, make the effort to follow along with the series. Because the thing about these kinds of, uh, these kinds of series, is that's not passive and it's not, you know, necessarily totally easy to just keep up with the series like you've you know there's a lot to figure out mm -hmm. there's a lot of discussing that gets done like there's a lot of time and legwork that goes into watching these um and like the fact that people were able and willing to kind of do that for our work is just like i mean it, it's so it's so humbling and it's so it just fills me with you know unbelievable gratitude that like and, and this is you know one of the the great strengths of the internet in general is that like it's you know it's allowed so many people to explore alternative like uh, modes of both consuming and producing art and like uh, I've I, I've in my short time so far in the kind of unfiction community I found that like these are some of the most intelligent viewers of any medium like out there uh, like you know you talk to somebody who's you know just caught up on like Ray Donovan or whatever, they're gonna be like, oh, who's this guy? Uh, who's that guy? And they're like yeah. the main characters. Uh, pretty much everybody but Ray Donovan because his name's on the show. But like, and, and you know, when you talk to, to, you know, on fiction viewers, they're like, oh yeah, in video 48, like, you know, this thing happened and like, here are potential, you know, thematic implications of that. Uh, here is, you know, the solution. And they'll have the solution to codes in a day. And like, yeah. and like, honestly, if I were watching this, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. Like, I'm bad at these things. And like, the, like these people are just so brilliant and so dedicated. And like, the fact that we were able to give them something to sink their teeth into is incredibly humbling. Now, you've kind of already answered this, so I'm trying to... I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move on to a more grandiose version of this question. I was going to ask what you wanted to represent or wanted people to take away from this series, but I'm going to ask instead, when it comes to your individual art... 
both of you, your individual art forms, your message. What do you want? Pe this is kind of a darker or a darker question as well, but it doesn't have to be. When you're gone, what do you want people to take away from what you did? You know, like I, I've honestly considered this question a lot in life in general, um, and it's kind of multifaceted. Like I think, the, for starters, like I want them, I want people to take away that you know. I gave it my all and that, you know, I, I did a legitimate, like, honest, uh, you know, hardworking uh, effort to give to give viewers something that they enjoy, uh, even if I succeed, even if I fail miserably. Like, I, you know, I want that to come across. Um, additionally, like, one thing that is important to me in general as a person, um, and even if the art has nothing to do with this, right, like, even if the art is in a totally different context, even if the art were about, like, you know, a shark that's like eating a bunch of people or something. I, I'm not, I'm not going to copy Jaws. I'm not going to copy Jaws. Uh, they've already, they've already made that. Um, but Jurassic like, Park, Jaws. Yeah, right. All, all the Spielberg uh, monster animal movies. Cause I was, I was a big animal kid growing up and I still, I still am. I'm an environmental studies major, but like, um, so, you know, I love those movies, but the, the thing I, the th one thing I want people who interact with me in general, whether it's artistically, personally, everything is that like you know everybody's place in this world is important uh everybody matters that uh you know no one should be you know no one should feel like they wake up and it doesn't matter that they did uh i think that that is um that is such an important message whether or not the fiction is like dear evan hansen the musical that is centered around that or it's like this where it totally just isn't uh well I mean, you could actually make the argument that in a lot of ways it is uh, and that it motivates Hollis and Anthony's characters. So I think that would be an interesting takeaway um, from this. But from whatever I do, I want that to be in the I want that to be part of it. I guess I can give just like a little like a list of things that I try to accomplish in anything I make. Um, I. I want to evoke the inspiration for more people to create art themselves in my art because that's always one of the like when something makes me want to make something myself that's what i love the most um if i can do that as well then like that's you know a, a top five life ambition checked off um it always comes around with me so far at least to like uh, look, taking a look into the darker elements of humanity. Um, I, that's, I gravitate to horror. I find that that's something that, you know, it, it's an age of, you know, constant media stimulation and everything. Uh, people talk about this all the time. Um, and I feel like horror is one of the things that still really leaves a deep, profound impact. And I, I find myself gravitating to it and specifically the darker elements of humanity itself rather than, you know, uh, supernatural things, which are fine in and of themselves, of course. But I always gravitate to that, um, exploring the darker side of, of human nature. Um, beyond that, um, I, I want people, I want people also to know uh, or to feel that it's possible to, to still come up with new original ideas as well. Um, I, I try and I, I don't always succeed, but I try to always have some little element of something new in anything I would make. And like to, to prove that that's still possible because there, of course, now there's an adage, an aphorism that, you know, there are no, not an aphorism, but just like a common saying now that there are no original ideas anymore. And it's like, that is true. But if you can combine two old ideas, it, it does make something new in my, the way I see it. Um, and to just kind of prove that that's possible, I'm always trying to do that as well and convey that that's possible to other people. We definitely hope that we're not chasing the dragon of hiding in my home forever. Um, in that, like, we're always falling short of it. Like, we want to grow, um, mm -hmm. I think, is what we ultimately want to do. Yeah, and I believe you will. Um, like, I can't believe, honestly, I really can't believe this is your first big project like this because it just, it felt so well executed and it felt like you'd had experience before. So I can only imagine where you all are going to go in the future. So, like, I've been thinking of concepts for unfiction series for, you know, six or seven years, um, but never actually tried to execute any of them. And I, I, I guess I'm just thinking, I'm coming to this right now, I guess it does technically, it goes to show that if you, if you like it enough, if you've, if you like watching unfiction series enough, or just enjoying whatever genre or medium it is, 
if you like it enough and you just study it enough, you know, you can you, like even the first time. And certainly if you keep trying beyond the first time, like you can do like it's cliche, but anyone can. I think I think that's extremely true. It's like I say before, people don't always get it when I say this, but I say everyone has their own genius. They just have to find a way to sculpt it out. So I Absolutely. think that kind of aligns with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else you all would like to say to uh, the fans of Hiding in My Home or just the audience in general before we go? Honestly, for me, just the biggest thank you possible. Like, that's really all I got at this point. Like, just the biggest thank you um, for, you know, kind of picking up what we were putting down and making this effort so, you know, for rewarding our effort so incredibly in a way we could never have imagined. Like, it was, it was, it was all them. It was all, it was all the viewers. It was all you guys. Like, it was, I mean, it was unbelievable what you've been able to give to us and we hope that what we were able to give to you comes you know and fills out 120th of what you've given to us i know i've said this already but i've you know i've had the, a dream of just making some kind of web series or just some anything artistic that just resonates with people or just they even not even necessarily like they relate to it but they just they enjoy it and if that was the case with hiding in my home, which I, it seems like it was for a fair number of people, that's just, it's one of the most humbling and possible, you know, things to, to happen to me in my life and extremely thankful for it. Everyone who kept up with it or watched it at any point. Um, and I also say that I and Max will, will be in contact. We'll, we'll stay in touch. You'll hear from us. Um, hopefully, continually from here on out. All right. Thank you guys again uh, for this opportunity for this interview. Thank you uh, for stopping by today, uh, sharing some of your mind. I've enjoyed hearing your thoughts. I'm sure that everyone else will as well. Just thank you again. Hey, thank you all for watching. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. Thank you all so much for everything you do to support what I do. Vexus, CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jerry Mullins, and Phantasm7. Thank you all again for keeping this channel and my other projects going.